Okay, so welcome to uh, this basic bird identification course. Um, this is a bird identification course that's uh, aimed at uh, people starting out birding, starting out bird identification. Um, but I'm sure no matter what your experience is, you, you might learn one or two things uh, from this course. Um, yeah, so what to, to expect from this course? Um, firstly, even though I am going to be referring to a lot of South African species of birds, uh, this can be used to identify birds anywhere in the world. Um, you don't have to uh, necessarily be from South Africa to benefit from this. And if you use this these techniques, um, you'll be able to identify birds from uh, anywhere in the world. Um, basically, what we're going to go through is the basics that are needed to identify a bird. So everything from basically a step-to-step -step process to identify the bird that you're looking at. Um, I advise having a notebook and a pen with you um, so that you can take notes, even though this video is on YouTube, so you'll be able to re-watch re it over and over again. Um, but it is helpful have, to have some notes so that when you're out there in the field looking at birds, um, you already have all your pointers down with you. Okay, so who am I? I'm this guy that's going to teach you about birds. So that's me, the crazy guy running in the bush. My name's Alfie Curling. Um, I'm a, a birding and wildlife specialist, and uh, I've been teaching people how to identify birds for over a decade, uh, primarily in the um, tourism industry and uh, out on safaris. Um, I've been identifying birds for as long as I can remember. Um, yeah, I think uh, I started saying bird names as some of my first words. So my obsession with birding uh, is, is endless. So to start off with, um, it's not necessary to have any equipment when you're starting off, but there are some things that I would highly recommend that you have. Uh, starting off uh, with binoculars, um, they're really, really helpful because you can get a, a nice, good, close view of the bird and you can look for the various identification features. Um, if you look in the description at the, the bottom of this video, um, you'll see a, a link to a video um, that tells you uh, all about uh, choosing the right binoculars for you. And uh, I'm sure that will be quite handy. Um, another thing that uh, is quite an essential one when, you, when it comes to identifying birds is a field guide or, a, or a, even the, nowadays with technology, uh, an app. Um, because uh, you need something to, to reference to to work out that bird's identification. Um, another very helpful thing to have is a, is a camera. It doesn't have to be one of these massive SLR cameras. Um, you don't necessarily have to take professional photographs. Um, the camera in the, in the, the um, picture over there is a, a bridge camera, which is great um, because they're quite small and compact and they still have quite a, a, a good zoom on them and you can get some really nice details um, of the of the birds and then you can refer back to those pictures and uh, sit and go through them and and point out the the various identification factors um, from the comfort of your own home after your birding trip uh, and then another one that i wanted to include here is is a spotting scope um, it's not necessary not really necessary for for a beginner um, if you're living in a place along the coast where you're looking at birds way in the distance or you live in a wetland or somewhere where there's a lot of waders that tend to be quite far away. So like if you're based up in the UK, um, it's quite a helpful tool to have. Um, but certainly something you can, uh, can look at getting a little bit later on uh, once you, uh, you've been birding for a while. But it is a helpful thing to have. All right, so what I'd like to do after each section is just give you a little bit of homework, um, just so that uh, you can practice these things and get yourself prepared for the, the best uh, um, chances of uh, success and getting the most out of this course. So I recommend uh, having a look and seeing what your, your um, best local field guides or apps are for your area. Um, Normally there's, a, there's quite a wide variety, but if you go onto any of the local birding Facebook pages and ask around there, normally you'll get some, some helpful advice. 
and then also have start having a look at some binoculars if you don't have any binoculars yet and uh, have a look at the price range uh, that suits you and see if you can find ones that will that will work for you all right so what process do we go through to identify birds um, i'm going to be going through this in a little bit more detail further on in the course so don't uh, stress too much about this just yet um, and while i'm at it there's going to be a link at the bottom of this video to a more advanced course where i break these things down into a lot more detail um, but at the moment i'm just going to go through the basics um, and uh, touch on them briefly so basically the process i'm going to go through this quite quickly so we can get break them them down um, firstly would be the size of the bird uh, and then you want to look at the bill shape and color which is quite an important one uh, the length and color of the bird's legs uh, plumage color or markings on the bird um, what habitat it's in uh, what it's doing what its activity is and where it occurs what's its distribution so going into size uh, i like to break down the initial size comparison to three different sizes so small medium and large uh, to start off with small, a good reference is something like a sparrow, uh, which are normally around about 15 centimeters or about five, six inches in length, bearing in mind that we're talking about the, from the top of the head to the, the tip of the tail. And um, yeah, it's, it's once you can work out the body size, normally you can work out what family it is, um, and it is a helpful uh, identification feature. Uh, so those are the smaller ones. Uh, medium sized birds, things like a dove, um they're normally up to about 30 centimeters 33 centimeters about 12 inches in length and then there'll be large birds so those would be things like a spur fowl or a pheasant a uh, guinea fowl um, a big eagle um, the larger birds an ostrich um, and that's normally starts off at around about 50 centimeters or about 20 inches um, in length so just to give you a little bit more homework um so have a look at your local field guide or app and try and identify and list two birds for each size category just so that you can start to get a bit of understanding of, of uh, the sizes of birds and, and, and how they're grouped. Right, so going into bull shape and color, um, this is quite an important uh, aspect of identifying a bird because a lot of the times in field guides, you'll find birds that are grouped by their family type and you tend to find that families feed on very similar foods and uh, depending on what a bird feeds on a lot of the times depends on what their bull shape is or their, their bull um, sizes so we're going to go into these in quite a lot more detail than the, the other factors in terms of identifying a bird because I, I do feel that it's quite an important aspect to to look at Right, so starting off with the conical shaped bulls, um, that's predominantly birds that are seed eaters. So if you have a look at this violet dead wax bull, you'll see that um, it's got a very short conical shaped beak. It's beaks red in color, um, quite characteristic of birds that feed on grass seeds. Um, other birds like uh, this brown throated weaver uh, will also have a, a, a conical shaped beak, but you can see the, the beak is a little bit longer. Um, and that's because they also use uh, their bills to weave quite intricate nests. So V-curved probe shaped beaks, um, these are various uh, probers, so things like sunbirds or hummingbirds, um, various birds that feed on nectar um, tend to have these uh, V-curved beaks. You can see very long uh, beaks that are, are pointing downwards slightly. Um, Another bird that, that'll have something like that, interestingly enough, not used for probing, um, are things like bee eaters, which actually use their beaks to, to catch insects. And it's a, quite an interesting bull shape for catching insects. Um, and then you'll get various waders that will be probing mud flats, um, trying to find various little mollusks and snails, and that's in the mud, um, other invertebrates. Um, and they tend to have these decurved uh, probing shaped beaks. So straight probe shaped beaks, a lot of the times that's the waders. Um, you can see in this example here, um, it's a slightly upturned beak of this green shank, um, but it's still quite straight. Um, and once you uh, manage to identify, okay, this is a straight probe shaped beaks bird, 
Um, you can have a look and see if it's slightly upturned or downturned or just straight. Um, also take into consideration the length uh, of the beak. Cask shape, um, that's quite characteristic of hornbills. Um, so in a lot of parts of the world, you don't really have to worry about this. Uh, but if you're in Africa or Asia, um, you get hornbills with all sorts of different uh, shapes and sized bills with a, a varying sized cask on top of the on top of the horn, oh, on top of the bill, excuse me. Um, yeah, so going through tweezer shaped beaks, this is probably the most um, commonly seen bill shape. Um, it's predominantly birds that feed on insects, but also birds that, some birds that feed on fruit. Um, so quite a thin slender beak um, in various shapes and sizes, um, and predominantly birds that are gleaning insects from branches um, or under leaves or catching insects mid-flight and then also um, birds feeding on small fruits and soft fruits. So short stout hook shaped beaks so they tend to be birds that are catching slightly bigger insects or even smaller um, creatures like mice. Um, they have a much heavier bill with a very characteristic hook on the tip as you can see there they all have that tiny little hook on the top of their beak. All right, tool shape. Uh, that's also quite a, a standard shape for woodpeckers. You can see it's a straight beak, but it's got a much more bulkier, it's got a lot more bulk to it, um, as opposed to uh, the, the probers, which tend to have a, a slightly thinner beak. Um, so the woodpeckers tend to fall under this group. Spear shape. A lot of the time, this is birds that tend to um, dwell in aquatic habitats, so um, in reed beds or coastal water, and they're using that spear-shaped beak to catch things like fish, um, frogs, and, and insects. So things like herons, uh, kingfishers, and egrets would be the ones with the nice spear-shaped beaks. Large angular shaped beaks, so that's very characteristic of flamingos. Uh, they tend to have quite a unique shaped beak um, in order to, to feed on the, the very specific little organisms that they feed on. Right, hook shaped. Um, a lot of the times that would be the raptors because they're using that nice big hook to, to tear off meat uh, from the, the, the prey that they've caught. Um, and then another bird that's a group family group that falls under this would be the parrots. Um, they've also got these nice hook shaped beaks, predominantly used for uh, cracking open nuts and getting into fruit. So a little bit of homework for you in terms of the, the bull shapes is uh, to maybe go through those bull shapes again and try and find two local birds for each bull shape. Uh, it might be a bit tricky for angular because uh, that's just flamingos. And then also for cask shaped, if you don't have any hornbills in the area that you live in, um, that's uh, going to be two that you'll be able to get away with skipping. Um, but then also use your local field guide. Maybe there's uh, those birds occur not necessarily where you are, but close by. Um, so go through that and you'll also be able to see in your field guide how those various family groups are, are um, connected and grouped within the, within the field guide. So the length and color of legs. So this is a, quite important to, to take note of because you'll have birds with long legs like this, uh, this heron um, and they're busy walking through long grass or wading, busy catching insects or fish, frogs um, and then you'll get birds that don't necessarily do that much walking and, and are mainly perching so they'll have much shorter legs um, and also very important to take note of the color um, especially if you take a, a look at this black crake uh, you'll see those pinkish red legs, very characteristic and a great identification feature. Another thing to have a look at is, is whether the legs are feathered or not, um, especially when it comes to identifying raptors, uh, which can all be quite similar. Um, having a look at the, whether the legs are feathered or not can be quite a handy identification feature. Right, so that's a great example in the picture down below of uh, of a raptor with uh, feathered legs. Right, so a little bit of homework is to, to just list and identify one local bird that has uh, legs that are, are long, short, and feathered. 
um, and also just to get a bit more of a feel of your field guide and uh, and what various characteristics uh, the birds have. Um, but yeah, use your local field guide um, or app for that. It's probably going to be the easiest way to, to do that. And then another thing to take note of, uh, another very important thing to take note of, is plumage, color, and markings. So if you have a look at this uh, African pied wagtail on the left here, uh, it's great because it, 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 it shows you a lot of really cool characteristics. And in the more advanced course, which you'll, you'll see a link to it in the, in the description below, I'll go through this in a lot more detail and point out the various um, important um, anatomy features of a bird that you should be looking out on. But if you look at this wagtail and uh, you look above its eye, it's got that very characteristic white eye stripe. So that's something you want to take note of. You want to take note of the, the black on its cheek, um, that nice big black breast band that goes across its chest. You can see it's got a white underbelly. Um, another thing to look at is wing bars. If there's any markings on the wings, so you can see it's got a white wing bar there. Uh, the color on the back, the color on the top of the head, if there's any distinctive markings on the tails. Um, all of these things you want to take note of because sometimes you'll have birds that are very similar, but there's a slight color difference um, or a slight difference in those markings. Um, and then you also get incredibly beautiful birds, um, and it certainly helps you to, to find the them a lot easier because they've got those nice bright markings um, and take note of the color and where the color is because once again sometimes you have colorful birds that are very similar but the color is just in a different place um, when it comes to the little brown birds or the lbjs or little brown jobs that i like to to say um, then having a look at markings is very important so looking at eye stripes and wing bars and and that kind of uh, of markings a little bit of uh, homework for you to do in that aspect. Um, sometimes I identify and list the birds with the most colorful plumage in your area. So this is quite a fun one. Have a look at your, your field guide. Um, and find a, one bird, or it can be more. You can do as many birds as you like and uh, with really colorful plumage. Um, and that's a great way to, to go, okay, well, that's uh, got a bright red breast or it's got a white eye stripe. And, and, and try and familiarize yourself with the bird anatomy. Um, a lot of the times in field guides that'll be in the front, uh, they'll do a nice breakdown of the anatomy. Also, if you'd like a slightly more detailed information about the bird anatomy by me, then uh, have a look in the description below and you'll see the um, link to the slightly more advanced version of this course. Right, so habitat is another interesting thing to note because a lot of birds will be very habitat specific. Some birds you'll get all over the place and other birds will be very much habitat specific. So if you have a look on the, the left there, that's a forest in, in Mozambique um, and a lot of birds that you'll only get in those forests. And then also take note that I'm using forest for example, but it, it can work like this with any habitat. Um, that you get different types of that habitat. So you get lowland forest, highland forest, um, riverine forest, and certain birds will have that sort of sub habitat within a habitat. So just take note of the habitat that's, uh, that you've seen the bird in, because a lot of the times when you're reading the descriptions in your field guides, um, you'll, they'll describe what habitat that bird likes to occur in. Um, so a couple of examples of habitats here. You're going to have a, a huge array of habitats around the world. So I'm just going to cover three here quickly. Um, another one is nice, big, open, grassy fields, the open plains. Um, take note of the length of the grass. Is it long grass? Is it short grass? Are there trees? Is it more wooded? Is it more open? Um, all things to sort of factor in um, when it comes to identifying a bird. Because once again, you'll have birds that are very similar but one will like long grass, one will like short grass. So just take note of that when, when you, you have spotted a bird. And then another one that's quite a diverse one is um, the aquatic habitats, so water. So whether it's on the ocean or in a marsh or on a lake, um, on a river, uh, depending on, on where that bird has been seen, um, can actually help you identify that bird. 
Right, so a little bit of homework for you. If you were to have a look in your immediate area, try and identify a few different habitat types. So have a look at uh, what various habitats you have in your local area. And um, like I said, there's a bit of a breakdown of habitats in some field guides. So have a look there first, um, and then you can match up what habitat types you have in your area. And that'll actually help you to work out what birds occur in that area and uh, you can start looking for those particular species. So activity, what the bird is doing. So a lot of the time, some birds will give off very characteristic behaviors. Um, so I want to give a, an example of a South African bird, something like the familiar chat. When it lands, it flicks its wings. And uh, that's a very handy identification feature of it. Um, so various birds can sometimes do things that are very unique to them. So take notes of what that bird is doing. Also have a look and see where they are. Are they busy moving around in the undergrowth of a bush? Are they quite shy and skulking? Or are they perched on top of a, of a branch and uh, hawking insects or displaying? Or are they calling from the top of a branch? Or are they calling from deep inside a bush? Are they walking on a road on the verge of, of a river uh, or moving between reeds? Um, are they out in the open? Are they walking? Are they flying? Um, try and take note of what those birds are doing because that's really going to help you when it comes to understanding their behavior. Once again, when you're reading up about the description of the bird in your field guide, sometimes that can be quite a, a key factor. Right, so a little bit of homework. This is a fun one for you. Um, is to go outside and observe the various birds in your garden or wherever you are and have a look at the activities that they're doing. So take notes of how one bird is behaving differently to another and try and see what unique features each bird has. And how this is gonna help you in the future is that eventually, if you practice this enough, you can sometimes just see what a bird is doing and pretty much identify them just from that um, because they have their own characteristic behaviors that they, they do and activities. Right, so the last one is uh, quite important, distribution. So if you're having a look at a book and uh, you found this bird and, it's, and you think, oh, it could be this, but it doesn't occur where you are, it's quite unlikely that it's going to be that bird. So best to start having a look to see if there's any similar species that occur in that area. Now, I'm, I'm not going to lie, birds have wings and they fly. and uh, you know, for the various twitches out there, the guys will go and, and chase interesting and rare birds or unusual sightings. There are birds that will pop up in the middle of nowhere that don't make any sense as to why they're there. But 99% of the time, birds tend to stick to their natural distribution. So um, most of, if you've got a good field guide, uh, it will have a distribution map of that bird and you can work out whether it occurs um, in your area or not. So very important thing to, to really um, sort out between similar birds and, and get your list a little bit smaller. So a bit of homework for you again. Um, start getting an understanding of what birds occur in your area. Have a look at your field guides, look at the distribution maps and, uh, and try and make a list of the birds that occur in your area. And it gives you a good start and you can start looking at those birds and then working out what habitat types they're in um, and then going to those habitat types and then you know how they behave so you're going to be looking in the undergrowth for them and you find a bird in the undergrowth and then you know what the markings are that you want to look for so you have a look at the markings are oh, the markings match fantastic you have a look at the bull shape and everything all match together and it all falls in place and all of a sudden you're identifying birds. So it's quite a nice way to, to um, work out what's in your area. And also if you're going birding in a different area, um, have a look and see what occurs there. And uh, it gives you a, a, a list of species that you can potentially look for. Well, big thank you for having a look at the, this course. Um, I hope it's been helpful. Um, a huge thank you to Lynette Rudman. Uh, she provided me with all my photos for this, uh, for this course. And uh, yeah, a big thank you to, to you guys. Uh, 
my closing advice is to practice these techniques. The more you practice them, the better you become. Practice, practice, practice. And um, yeah, the more you practice, certainly the, the, the better you'll become. Uh, if you've really enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my, my channel. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other wildlife videos that I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, watching. And uh, if you have a look in the description below, you'll see a link to the, the more detailed version of the course where I, I go into things in a lot more detail. Um, and uh, you'll see the, the links to, to where to find that. And if you're interested, please go ahead and, and do that one. And yeah, good luck with uh, your birding. And I hope that this helps you to identify birds. I hope it's been broken down a little bit better. Uh, feel free to comment down below if you have any questions, uh, if you need any more information. And yes, thanks for watching.